Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the K and B Music Den. He's Brad. And that's Keith. Ah, <laughs> three off. I've been waiting to do that all week. It worked. <laughs> it did. Um, so we are here, as you know, because you clicked on it, like we always mm -hmm. say, to do yet another new album review. And this is an '80s synth pop legend, <laughs> Mr. '80s. I mean, I love this guy so much, and I know I, you do now yeah. too. Howard Jones, uh, what an absolute legend. Mm -hmm. um, he has a new album out called Dialogue. Um, so we're going to talk about that. So I know I've been into Howard Jones since I was a kid, grew up in the 80s with all of you know the big hits. Uh, uh, no One Is To Blame is the song that everyone knows, even if you're not really that into music at all. Yeah. There's no way you don't know that song. No One Is To Blame, one of the biggest hits of the 1980s. Um, and Howard Jones seems to be one of those guys to me where like people think they only know that song. But then I'm like, more. yeah, but then I'm like, yeah. well, you remember that song? I need an everlasting <laughs> love. Oh, I love that song. That's Howard Jones, too. Yeah. Oh, you remember that song? What is love? <laughs> oh, I love that song. That's Howard Jones, too. So he's the guy that like people are like, who? But then when you start singing yeah. the songs or playing the songs, better to play them than have me sing. <laughs> it's like, oh, OK. Like this dude is mm -hmm. a legend. One of my favorite artists of all time, and I know we cover so much music here, and I say things like that a lot, but really, I mean, yeah. from the 80s, he's hard to top. I mean, he's really hard to top. Um, so I know I, a while back, way before we started this channel, years ago, um, Brad had said to me that he the one decade that he wasn't as familiar yeah, with, yeah. not necessarily with that he didn't like, mm -hmm. was the 80s, and I was like, oh, You've come to the right guy. Uh, so, man, I got you into what? Glass Tiger? Oh, we got... I had an 80s and... education week. <laughs> yeah. where well, you. He was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. He was setting me up with different 80s albums, saying, you got to have this, you got to have this, you got to have this. I was going to the vinyl uh, record store, picking up these albums, and Howard Jones was one of the ones I latched on to and bought a few of his albums, actually. Yeah. Um, well, I wonder, yep. did, did you buy his debut, I Humans did. Live? I have it. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. Yep. Um, then there's a, like a 12 inch. Do not album. have that. Well, that's like yeah. uh, remixes and stuff, but you know, I'm a very big Howard Jones fan. So this is the one that everybody knows. No I one got that, to blame. of course. Uh, things can only get better. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know that one too. Like the, yeah. this is that guy. Um, dream into action. Oh, so good. Life in one day. Oh, yeah. yep. Don't try to live your life in one day. This is another EP action replay. I have, I wanted to show this cause it, it, these are hard to find. These are actual 12-inch uh, singles from his big heyday. This is Things Can Only Get Better. And then there's a couple of tracks that are like non-album tracks. You Jazzy Nork. You Jazzy Nork. I believe, that's, I believe that's instrumental. I hope it is. Because uh, I don't want to know what a Nork is. But, um, <laughs> Look Mama. Oh, hi, Mom, if you're watching. No, but the song's called Look Mama. Look at that hair, dude. That's, that's, that's great right, hair. Jess. That's great hair. Yeah. So Learning How to Love is a non... And it's got this like cool like sticker with H O W. I don't know. I forget what that means. I looked it up when I logged this. But and then uh, Howard Jones one to one. Uh, what was the one on here? Uh, oh, you know I love you, don't you? Was a was a hit off there. Oh, is this a single? Yep. I got a the single of you know I, I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> he does, man. I didn't realize he had this much. Oh, and this is the everlasting loves on this one. Man, cross that line. Cross that line. Yeah. <laughs> So I got a lot of Howard Jones I just wanted to show off. Uh, I don't have physical copies of his more recent stuff because um, I don't have an unlimited budget and I'm lucky <laughs> enough to be able to get it on my phone. But anyway, let's talk about dialogue. Sure. We're big fans. We're going into this one. You know, I mean, this guy's what, 40 years into his yeah. career, if not more. Yep. Um, first thoughts, Brad, you know, I like to do this to you. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I was actually surprised by this album. Um, How so? Mainly, and I'm just going to sound silly, but his voice. He's got such a good, strong voice still. I remember when, when you recommended this, I, I looked up quick and I was like, he's 67. Oh, yeah. And for the type know. of music he performs, I was like, this could be... I wasn't sure how it would come off. And yeah. I haven't heard recent... All my stuff from him is 80s, and yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't too familiar with his recent stuff. But I put it on and it sounds fresh. I mean, it sounds... Yes. It yes. sounds... Yes. It sounds new. And it sounds good vocally, musically. It doesn't sound like a 67 year old man making music. It sounds like no, it's something, just, yeah. It sounds like it could have been from the 80s. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with yeah. a modern twist, in my opinion. With better production. I think some of the tools, production wise, you can hear it. Yeah. Make it, you know, cleaner sounds. And 
But yeah, vocally, he was fantastic on the album. I mean, he still sounds 25. He does. Yeah, I mean, he really does. He does. I, I, I'm so impressed by him. Yeah. I'm so impressed by him. And I, I feel like when I listened to this album, because we decided to do mm -hmm. this for the channel, I was like, you know what? I, I've been sleeping on his more recent stuff. Not that I haven't, you know, when he put something out, I listen to it. But I don't really, like, listen and listen and mm -hmm. know it like the earlier stuff. And that's shame on me because he doesn't put out bad music. Like you said, yeah. 67, voice still sounds like he's in his 20s. Amazing. No joke. No, it really does. Um, now, he, uh, I went on his website, he is specifically calling this an electronic album. And, you know, synth pop, electronic, uh, is it the same? And no. Um, there are subtle differences. They're, okay. they're you know, uh, birds of the same feather, maybe, and they flock together. Um, but there are some differences that I notice. And again, some of it's that more modern production, which lends itself so well to yeah. the type of music he does. Um, but now, this is album number three in a collection of four, what he calls electronic albums that he's putting oh, out. Oh, see, I didn't know that. So, oh, well, I, I didn't did. until I read it either. Um, okay. He's got another one coming out next year, and it's going to be called Global Citizen. Okay. So maybe we'll check that one out, too, on the channel. Um, now I rarely do this, but when I went to his website, I thought this really summed it up really well. Um, so this is actually a direct quote from Howard Jones regarding this album. So I'm just going to read this real quick. He says, dialogue was musically conceived during the pandemic and lockdown, but I really didn't want to commit to any lyrics during that time out of fear that they may be a bit downbeat. Not oh. my, not my style, he says. <laughs> Um, he says, I started lyrics as things were returning to normal, and I wanted them to reflect the themes of how important it is for us to communicate and talk, address our lack of confidence emerging from the isolation, and reminding ourselves of how amazing it is to be alive now, hmm. even though civilization is going through unprecedented existential threats, unquote. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, okay. I read that and I was like, okay. It's, it's, he's summing it up here. Yeah. But, the, you know... When I put the album on, the first two songs, I noticed that the vocals were very affected. Oh, yeah. And it's part of the modern production, electronics and pop, you know, um, nothing that he hasn't done in the past either. But he's got such a great voice still, like you said. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, OK, this thing's got eight songs on it. I'm two songs in and it's it's almost like they're burying his voice a bit. It's a stylistic choice. And the song sounded like really cool yeah. and strong. So it didn't bother me. But I was like. They're not going to bury his voice this whole album, are they? <laughs> and no, track three starts, and it was like his voice comes shining mm -hmm. through, and it's like, thank you. Um, but yeah, well, you touched on it too with his vocals. I mean, Man, yeah. so impressive. And, you know, it, it sounds like a silly thing to say, but songwriting. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's still writing fantastic yeah. songs. Yeah, this doesn't seem like, like a swan song type album where someone's just, you know, putting out music because that's what they want to do this sounds really well done well written well sang well this is a guy who can still compete top form in my opinion yeah and you know i mean this album there are several songs in this album that will make you shake your booty on the dance floor <laughs> it's not it, mine it, no, no yeah no, 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 no i don't shake no booty no, no, no. <laughs> yeah it's a personal choice it's <laughs> but if you're so inclined to do that and what i the reason why i said that um is because you know, a lot of the music that's very popular right now is mm -hmm. like the pop, you know, the dancey stuff, yeah. which is fine. You know, if that's what you're yeah. into. Um, I'm not as into that modern stuff because I don't think the songwriting is great anymore. No, it's not. Like it was in the 80s and back, you know. Um, but this is a, what's a shame about all this for me for Howard Jones is that because he is 67, they're not going to play. I was going to say, stuff. I know where you're going with this, and it's actually a fascinating point. Yeah. The fact that he kind of fills a gap that is being popular at the moment and he does it better yes but because of his age and when he came from the 80s he'll be looked over as a nostalgic act instead of a a current act yes yeah, exactly yeah yep. that bothers me yeah i can understand that because if you played if you you know if someone's at the club and there's this dance hit this dance yeah. hit this song and you just snuck one of these songs in oh, off this new album yes no one would miss a nope, beat nope. and no one would miss a step on the floor no. like i'm serious um, and it, it's just a shame, but you know, smart people like us <laughs> and you can enjoy his yeah. music, um, still to this day. Um, I did want to touch on a little bit of the lyrics cause he talked about, you know, how some of this was written during the pandemic and I didn't notice this the first time I listened through the album, but one, one of the songs he sings, lonely lockdown, too much downtime, tempted to do, excuse me, tempted to demonize, see from both sides. 
So that's that's very COVID-y, <laughs> those lyrics. Yeah. Um, but it's fascinating, this time frame of all these new albums coming out. Yeah. 50 years from now, people are going to come back to these albums and go, wow, what the hell was going on during that time frame? Because all these albums have such an isolated, yeah. what's going on in the world vibe to them that yeah. they're going to have about a two-year span of albums that are just going to be weird, like uncomfortable like what was going on but yeah it's yeah. gonna be its own little pocket of time <laughs> there is and well and again like we've talked about yeah. before on the channel you know these times where people can't you know can't or couldn't tour, mm -hmm. um they a lot of artists decide to use that time to be creative and record as opposed to just you know taking a vacation yeah. so thank you um for folks like howard jones who gave us another great album we did uh, global citizens coming next year i'm looking forward to that i'm actually looking forward to going back and listening to the previous two um, that are in this series of electronic albums, as he's calling them. Uh, I'm sure they're fantastic. And I'm sure I heard them when they came out, but I just didn't, like, listen and listen over and over again and really know Did you them. have a highlight on this album? Uh, as far as, yeah, songs. Well, I had, um, I had written down, uh, there's only eight songs. No, oh, yeah, it was just, yeah. So I still picked three, though. <laughs> oh, you picked, okay. Yeah, so I picked. I got one. So. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm wondering if your one is one of my three. Let's see. I shall say mine first. That way we'll find out. Go ahead. Formed by the Stars. That's my first pick. All right, there we go. <laughs> hey, so that would be the one I would have someone listen to if I wanted them to... Me too. Okay. Formed by the Stars yep. is a fantastic it is. song. It is. Um, and it should be getting more love online. Mm -hmm. It's it's getting love, don't get me wrong. Is it out as a single? No, I mean like oh. people... It's not that no one appreciates Howard Jones anymore. I don't want to okay. come across as that. It's just like in the in the overall scheme mm -hmm. of things, it should be he should be still paid more attention to than he probably is. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's the plight of all of us as we age, as I yeah. you know, stare down the barrel of 50 in a couple of years. Um, but, yes, Formed by the Stars, absolutely. Uh, okay. My One True Love, I enjoyed. And also, I believe it's the last song, I Believe in You. Okay. I believe in you. Which, again, that's another one where I looked at the title, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, maybe it's going to be like, you know. And it was more upbeat, but it was yeah. cool. It was cool. Um, so, yeah, Howard Jones, I mean... If you're a casual fan, if you just know the hits, if you just know the hits, you know a lot of songs. Um, <laughs> That's true. But check, you know, check out what this guy's doing at age 67 and, and be impressed like we are. Um, you, I know you will be if you if you like him from the 80s. I mean, this, this sound, he yeah. could have put this out and said, oh, this was a little EP I did in the 80s. I never released it. Here it is. And if it weren't for the more modern production you you could easily be fooled that he recorded this in the 80s my brain's just still stuck on the idea about him the popular music if yeah he's yeah. like one of these songs on like Fortnite, you know where all these kids are playing yeah yeah it'd be huge yeah <laughs> man he'd probably selling a lot of records yeah it's kind of a shame how placement works but yeah okay, geez, yep. we could do a whole we could do a whole documentary series <laughs> on it. <laughs> 10 part videos oh on. man um yeah let's start writing it yeah so um any last thoughts on Mr. Jones? Nope. I give it a big thumbs up. It was a great album. Oh, and yep. fantastic. Yeah. Um, and, well, t I'm looking forward to the one, the last one. Yeah. Uh, Global Citizen. The last one of the series. Hopefully not his last one. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. It's called Dialogue. It's Howard Jones, an 80s legend for a damn good reason. Yep. Check him out. Um, please subscribe to this channel and like the video. Share it on social media. Smash that <laughs> bell for notifications. And we will see you again soon. So many great albums coming out. We're trying to keep up. Mm -hmm. Just hang on for this ride and try and keep up with us. And for Brad, I'm Keith. This is the k &B Music Den. We're having so much fun doing this. Thanks for the support. Thanks yes. for the views. Thanks for the subscribes. And we will see you again real soon. See you guys. Bye-bye.